Today, our Pompeii the Frontiers Orthodontia channel has the honor to interview two important names in orthodontics, Dr. Lawrence Frederick Andrews and Dr. Will A. Andrews. Dr. Lawrence Andrews is world-renowned for his research published in 1972, The Six Keys to Normal Occlusion, which describes standards for tooth positions and relationships that every orthodontist should pursue during the final phase of orthodontic treatment and for being the inventor of the straight wire appliance in 1970. In the same year, Dr. Angels founded the Angels Foundation for Orthodontic Education and Research, an institution dedicated to research, teaching and orthodontic treatment. His work is revolutionary in orthodontic history. Dr. Will A. Angels is an ABO certified orthodontist with teaching appointments at several universities. He is past president of the Southern California component of the Edward A. Engel Society of Orthodontists and co-director of the The Angels Foundation for Orthodontic Education and Research, where he actively researches, teaches and participates in the development of new products. Together, doctors Will and Lawrence Andrews have published several articles and have lectured worldwide about the six element orthodontic philosophy. Thank you, Dr. Lawrence Andrews and Dr. Will Andrews for this interview. Dr. Lawrence Andrews, we read your article The Six Elements Orthodontic Philosophy, Treatment Goals, Classification and Rules for Treating. In 2015, in the 100th anniversary edition of the American Journal of Orthodontics and Dentofacial Orthopedics, a fantastic retrospective of your work and discoveries. In 1960, when you began your first research project, did you imagine the impact of our work would have in orthodontics worldwide? Please, tell us a little about your career trajectory through these years. Uh, Dr. Marcos, uh, <clears throat> your question is uh, requires uh, more than just uh, a few uh, sentences. Uh, it covers uh, about uh, 30 years of time of research, 30 years of research. And the first uh, half of that 30 years was uh, dedicated to uh, dealing with the teeth, uh, how to correct uh, the positions of teeth and uh, occlusions and because uh, surgeons didn't learn how to uh, move jaws until uh, the 1980s so there wasn't any of that sort of treatment going on uh, until then so uh, this research started in uh, the 1960s, so from the 1960s to the 1980s, uh, it was just uh, dealing with teeth. And uh, if you just deal with teeth in terms of uh, all that we are expected to deal with uh, today, uh, include the teeth and the jaws and occlusion. And so what I'm going to uh, discuss uh, in, regarding the answer to your question is just going to deal with the first 15 years of the research uh, that was done in our office. Uh, I began uh, my first research project uh, shortly uh, after completing my orthodontic uh, residency. Like all new uh, graduates, uh, I wanted to be a good orthodontist. Before the paint was uh, even dry on my first office, I decided uh, to begin to prepare for the tests required to become a diplomat of the American Board of Orthodox. It is a voluntary test offered yearly by the American uh, Board of Orthodox. And uh, the test uh, 
allows an orthodontist uh, to find out if their treatment results deserve special recognition by the American Board of Examiners. If so, uh, they are awarded uh, the title of uh, Diplomat of the American Board of Orthodox. It takes uh, years of preparation for the test. So as I uh, decided to start preparing uh, before I had my even my first patient, one of the exam requirements was to do a research project suitable for publishing in a peer-reviewed orthine journal. The research project I chose involved studying, grading, and photographing, and reporting the state of the uh, art of orthodontics in the 1950s and the 1960s. The treatment results of those orthodontists that earned diplomatic status the previous year are invited back the next year to display their treatment results at the National Orthodontic Meeting so that orthodontists that aspire one day to become uh, diplomats, they could see firsthand what the board examiners considered to be good treatment. That too was my personal alternate motive for doing that research. The research uh, project itself involved uh, three years of studying and grading and photographing the ABO treatment results relative to a typical denture setup. The treatment, ABO treatment results were compared with a um, typical denture setup, which uh, always uh, had perfect occlusion and uh, good positions of the teeth. The ABO treatment results did not compare as favorably with the denture setup as expected. So I spent the next two years searching for persons with naturally harmonious dentitions and never had orthotic treatment and didn't need it. And I took records of 120 of those individuals. The characteristics uh, of the tooth positions and the occlusions uh, of the 120 cast sample were then compared with the denture setup and they both had consistently the same tooth positions and occlusions. This discovery was the birth of the straight wire concept. Dr. Will Andrews will add to the straight wire story uh, during his part of the interview. I took the straight wire appliance concept to the two largest orthine companies in the United States and they did not think it would work. So I decided to start a company to see if the new idea had any merit. To tell uh, all that went into that adventure would take uh, too much time. But the uh, most important part of the adventure was uh, every bit as important as discovering the straight wire concept. The important discovery was learning how to measure tooth positions from the bracket site. It was uh, not only important for the straight wire plants, but it served as conceptually the basis for measuring all the six elements. It is the part of orthodontics that has been missing since for as long as orthodontics has been practiced. There are no two orthodontists that would treat the same patient the same. And with the six elements, with what was learned with this research project is that there are uniquely correct treatment goals for each individual person. 
and uh, they can be accomplished uh, uh, so that the results uh, uh, will uh, rate uh, specialty status. Specialty status. It's not uh, the opinion of each individual orthotics. It is based on science. And that's what orthotics needs. And because uh, ultimately all of those principles were applied to finding treatment goals for JAWS. And uh, we've been uh, beta testing them uh, for many years and they have been uh, studied by many independent uh, researchers and uh, they all uh, have passed, passed the test. So I think that uh, one day uh, the six elements will be as popular as uh, the straight wire appliance. So uh, that's as far as I'm going to uh, uh, go regarding uh, answering your question, but it uh, leaves uh, 15 years of research uh, not uh, as fully discussed. Dr. Will Andrews, you and your father are the creators of the Walla Ridge, an important and well-known landmark for individualization of the arc size and form. Within this context, which would be the possible consequences if, inadvertently, the professional promotes an exacerbated dental expansion out the Walla Ridge. Thank you for the question, Dr. Marcos. Uh, the Walla Ridge, as you know, is a clinical soft tissue ridge uh, that we use for customizing the shape of an arch wire. And if uh, done correctly, even with a round arch wire, you can guide the teeth to their proper inclinations by tipping. Uh, while leaving the roots of those teeth over basal bone. So it's a position that will be uh, supporting occlusion as well as health. If an arch is expanded beyond that significantly, uh, the primary risks would be the loss of or damage to the supporting tissues like the gingiva and or alveolar bone. Uh, if you expand really uh, excessively, um, we believe that's also uh, potentially pushing the limits of stability and prone to uh, post-treatment relapse, unless of course you use uh, long-term retention measures. But even if stable, uh, we believe an arch that's too wide with the roots not over basal bone is potentially unhealthy and harmful to the patient in the long term. It may take many years or decades, but we would prefer to keep the teeth in uh, while supporting optimal occlusion. Dr. Lawrence Andrews, since 1960, you have been studying and researching solutions for attaining better treatment results in orthodontics. To achieve fully satisfactory orthodontic outcomes, you proposed the six elements orthodontic philosophy. Nowadays, there are a number of new modalities of treatment being promoted in orthodontics. Can you explain why we should choose the six elements orthodontic philosophy over any of the other modalities? Uh, Dr. Uh, Daniela, uh, your question is uh, a good one for someone that is curious about the six elements but doesn't yet fully understand it. So the only answer I can give you uh, at this time is that if you know of a vaccine that will cure the treatment goal problem that exists in orthodontics, then I suggest you use it. But the only one that I know of is the six elements of orthodontic philosophy. Dr. Will Andrews, the six elements of our facial harmony are a set of goals that describes ideal positions for the teeth and jaws which promote health, function and beauty of the face in orthodontic treatment. 
Besides the orthodontist, other professionals of odontology can use these elements to evaluate their patients. For example, professionals of orthognetic surgery. Could you please tell us about the clinical application of these six elements in odontology? Dr. Daniela, yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I totally agree that the six elements of orofacial harmony would be very useful for all the specialties of dentistry, uh, particularly prosthodontists, periodontists, and oral and maxillofacial surgeons. Uh, prosthodontists could gain a better appreciation at, that the roles that jaw position and tooth positions play on occlusion and function. Uh, periodontists, we believe, would benefit by recognizing the impact that tooth positions, both individually and collectively, and occlusion, uh, will have on periodontal integrity. And especially oral and maxillofacial surgeons, uh, when it comes to orthognathic surgery, those surgeons that we know and that we've worked with have found that the six elements are extremely helpful in setting up treatment goals for them when they're repositioning jaws that are compatible with harmony uh, and that meet functional and aesthetic goals um, for their patients. Uh, we prefer to use the, the term harmony as opposed to beauty. Uh, we define harmony as something that is objective and measurable. It, um, it means essentially uh, health, function, and appearance. Um, harmony can be measured from stable, um, tangible landmarks and reference. Um, beauty, on the other hand, is, has many facets that are intangible. Um, such as the hair, the eyes, the ears, or personality traits. Uh, someone with harmony, it means that the, the tooth positions are all correct, the jaw positions are correct, at least as correct as we can make them, and contribute to the appearance of the patient maximally. And we couldn't, the patient wouldn't look any better um, if we moved the jaws any other, in any other position. Uh, but they still may not be beautiful if they don't have, uh, depending on the quality of their hair or their skin or their eyes or things like that that are outside of our control. So that's why we use the term harmony, the six, six elements of oral facial harmony. Thank you for the question. Dr. Laurence Andrews. In your 1979 JCO article, The Straight Wire Appliance, you suggested that the new technique would provoke a revolution in orthodontic history. Could you please tell us about the straight wire story and how this technique originated? Dr. Barcos, uh, your question about the straight wire appliance uh, being uh, one day uh, very popular that I that I claimed uh, years ago. Uh, I think the best answer I can give you that uh, it will uh, be very popular in time is that if you were to go to an orthodontic meeting. <clears throat> which there were a lot of orthodontic companies uh, that were present, you would uh, have noted some <clears throat> back in the 1960s that there wasn't one company that uh, had a straight wire appliance. And if you go to a, an orthodontic uh, meeting today where there are a lot of companies represented there isn't even one company that doesn't have one copy of the straight wire appliance. So I think that's uh, a pretty example that it uh, proved to uh, expect uh, that it would become popular. Dr. Will Andrews, one of our tools to treat your patients is the Andrews straight wire appliance. 
Could you please explain to us about this system? Yes, Dr. Marcos, as you might guess, the straight wire appliance is a large part of our uh, orthodontic philosophy. Uh, as you know, my father conceived of the straight wire concept and subsequently invented and produced the original straight wire appliance. This is going back to uh, the late 1960s and early 1970s. So collectively, the two of us, uh, my father and I, have been using the straight wire appliance longer than anybody uh, on the planet. Uh, it's been around for a long time now. But even today, there are a lot of aspects of the appliance system that are not fully appreciated by many orthodontists around the world. Uh, the best resource for anybody seeking information about the appliance and how it's designed to be used properly uh, is my father's first textbook, uh, right now his, his only textbook, uh, titled Straight Wire, The Concept and Appliance, which was published in 1989. I guess one of the least appreciated aspects of the system is that there are two types of brackets that we employ. Standard brackets are for teeth that do not require significant mesial or distal translation as part of the treatment, and translation brackets, which are used on teeth that do require significant mesial or distal translation. Of course, the appliance itself obviously won't decide for you whether to extract teeth or whether teeth need to be translated or how much force to apply to those teeth that you want to move. Uh, that's where uh, treatment goals and diagnosis come into play. Um, so diagnosis is still, still the king uh, when it comes to treating arches. No matter how good your appliance is, it won't necessarily help. It won't produce a good outcome, let's say, if your goals are not good and your diagnosis is not accurate. That's where the six elements uh, come into play, particularly element one. Uh, I've asked my father this question several times uh, in different ways, but um, I asked him, if you knew, knowing what you know now, um, and you were embarking on practice, an orthodontic practice, would you rather work uh, without the straight wire appliance, but understanding completely the six elements orthodontic philosophy? Or would you rather not know anything about the six elements orthodontic philosophy, but employ the straight wire appliance? Which would be your choice? And without hesitation, uh, his choice would be to uh, practice with full knowledge of the six elements orthodontic philosophy even without the straight wire appliance. Uh, we both would agree that the quality of your appliance, the quality of the brackets or how you use the appliance, all of that accounts for maybe 10% of the quality of an outcome. Uh, the other 90% comes from uh, treatment goals, philosophy, uh, knowing what you want out of an arch, when to extract and when not to extract, how to reposition jaws effectively, that sort of thing. So the appliance is important, but in the larger scheme of things, not nearly as important as all of the other decisions you have to make as part of treatment. Together, the appliance and the philosophy work beautifully together. And if you do have the six elements and you do understand particularly element one, how to diagnose an arch and treat an arch, then the straight wire appliance uh, fits like a glove. It's a perfect marriage of those two um, approaches um, and that's how we practice. Dr. Lawrence Angels, your 10-hour first theory is a very interesting concept that helps professionals and patients understand the importance of the continuity of applied forces in order to achieve the intended to movements. Could you please Explain this theory and how it originated. Uh, Dr. Daniela, uh, regarding your question about the 10-hour force theory, uh, I think that everything that uh, is uh, a part of 
the six elements of Orthodox philosophy. Uh, the Tenar Force Theory is uh, perhaps uh, one of the only uh, subjects that um, our opinion. Uh, I mean, I've done quite a bit of research regarding that, but I haven't really uh, uh, have the evidence that I would feel comfortable with reporting that it uh, what I what is being proposed, the ten R force theory uh, has scientific merit. I've tried real hard to get uh, a research project uh, regarding animals actually in Brazil. Uh, they do a lot of animal studies there, and I thought I made arrangements to. Uh, have that uh, project be accepted at the university, but uh, the first stage of it was uh, completed and was positive, but uh, the second stage, uh, f for example, uh, uh, they didn't uh, finish it. So, but the idea is that um, it takes about uh, 10 hours of time of force to a tooth before it'll start to move. And uh, if you remove the force, it only takes about uh, half an hour for the chemistry of the bone breakdown process to reverse itself. And after that, it takes 10 hours to get it started again. So if you utilize that premise and uh, you can then use some teeth that you don't want to move as an anchor for at least uh, eight hours uh, to uh, as uh, to uh, have the force with an elastic or spring uh, be uh, attached to the tooth that uh, you do want to move, and then after eight hours you can move the anchor. Uh, part of the elastic to another tooth and keep doing that until you end up with uh, 24 hours of force on the tooth that you do want to move, but no more than eight hours uh, to the tooth that you don't want to move. So it takes patient cooperation and uh, we've uh, have uh, other ways to establish uh, uh, anchorage that uh, do not require patient cooperation. Uh, so that's a safer way to do it. But it, it's still an interesting concept and uh, I have a lot of evidence that uh, regarding its merit, but uh, uh, we do not emphasize it in our teaching because it's not uh, uh, proven. It's not proven uh, to the level that we feel is needed to include it as uh, a part of the Six Elements uh, philosophy. Dr. Will Andrews, in your private clinic in San Diego, California, Poinom Orthodontics, you also offer new orthodontic treatment for some specific cases. There is a myth that the perfect orthodontic outcome is not achieved via lingual technique. Could you explain why this myth survives and why the lingual technique might not be indicated for every patient? Dr. Daniela, thank you for your question. Um, actually, um, when it comes to lingual appliances or any other modern uh, techniques such as aligner therapy, um, I don't have any issue with that. I don't. I think it is possible to achieve optimal treatment results, as we define that would be element element one for the arches and uh, all six of the el other elements. I think it is possible to do it with almost any appliance system. Um, I personally don't often uh, attempt uh, to do comprehensive treatment using lingual brackets. Um, I limit that just to patients that don't need 
complete uh, treatment of all the teeth or who've had treatment before and their occlusion is already pretty close to correct. Uh, so very, very minor kinds of realigning of teeth. And the same with aligners. I do comprehensive cases with aligners, but I tend to pick those that I think are the easiest ones to do. So I'm not attempting any very dramatic uh, tooth movements, and, uh, certainly non-extraction kinds of treatment. Um, so, but I, but I have seen uh, other doctors, colleagues that I know who can, who are very talented and can treat uh, to excellent results using lingual and or aligners. So anything can work, as I mentioned previously uh, to one of your other, other questions, that the appliance system is uh, a small percentage in terms of its uh, impact on the outcome of treatment. As long as we all agree on what the goals are, uh, in this case, element one, then I think we can all reach these goals, uh, or how we reach these goals is not so important. Um, but in, as I mentioned, in my particular case, I, I'm much more confident using traditional uh, brackets, so I haven't ventured into that realm very much as others might have. Dr. Will Andrews, we know you are about to release a new textbook. Could you please give us more information from this book and tell us a little more about its history? <clears throat> Dr. Marcos, yes, thank you very much for asking about our uh, upcoming new textbook. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, my father's first textbook titled uh, Straight Wire, uh, the Concept on Appliance, was published in 1989. Uh, that book is all about the appliance, its origins, its design, and how to use it. Um, the Six Elements came into being just after that book was published. Uh, in 19, uh, came into being in 1990. I joined my father in practice in 1992 and, and we were teaching the six elements uh, right from that time uh, forward as soon as I got in the practice. And uh, since that time we've in, employed the six elements exclusively on our patients and have given lectures and courses about the six elements orthodontic philosophy all over the world and all during that time which is 30 years now we've vetted all the concepts clinically and scientifically and uh, we began with just a teaching syllabus we wrote several versions of it over these years using them in our various courses that we've been teaching and each version of the syllabus over the years we improved it um, adding new evidence, clarifying some of the concepts and ideas behind the philosophy in writing. Uh, by now, the concepts are mature and we feel confident and felt confident writing a definitive textbook outlining the entire body of principles. The book is titled The Six Elements Orthodontic Philosophy. Right now it's at the publisher uh, we're in the process of refining some of the artwork and doing some fine-tuned editing on the text at this time. Uh, we chose to publish the book um, in Brazil using Dental Press based in Maringá, uh, Brazil, uh, based upon our friendship with that family-owned company. We've known them for a very long time and uh, based on the high quality of work they have been doing in Brazil for a long time. I'm sure that you, uh, Dr. Marcos and Dr. Daniela, are very familiar with uh, dental press publications in Brazil. But one reason we worked with them is we wanted the book to be available in not just English, but in Portuguese and Spanish right from the very beginning. And that's the plan. Um, other languages will be added uh, later, but we're going to start with those three. The book will cover everything in the philosophy uh, with a special emphasis on the goals, how to diagnose classification, which is very important. We have a new system of classification specifically for the six elements and, of course, on treatment. 
this book uh, we think will be available fairly soon uh, sometime during the early part of 2021. Dr. Wewendius, for our colleagues who desire to know more about your work, tell us about your projects, courses and events. Dr. Daniela, uh, my father and I intend for this new textbook of ours coming out to be the main source of information about the six elements. Um, there are courses available um, all the time around the world, um, and, but the textbook should be the, the foundation of all the information. Um, in addition, my father and I have been doing and still are doing, at least right now, a lot of virtual lectures live and recorded webinars. We should have an inventory of recorded webinars on our website soon. Uh, we don't yet, but we intend to have that soon. As far as in-person courses, of course, everything is on hold right now because of the pandemic. Uh, but prior uh, to this year, there's been an ongoing yearly course in Lima, Peru, it's a four-part course given over the course of an entire year. It's now in its seventh year, um, hosted by Dr. Marco Estrada and his team. Uh, we've been going there every year, and uh, that's the best source of live, uh, full comprehensive course about the six elements uh, going on right now. Information and updates about all of these uh, webinars or live courses and about the book and uh, research projects and uh, any future activities can all be found on our website which is andrewsfoundation.org www.andrewsfoundation.org Thank you very much for asking and uh, we certainly enjoyed doing this interview. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.